Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and today I'm here to share with you a little tutorial and step-by-step -step on how to do crosshatch quilting on your home machine. Crosshatch quilting is one of the most simple ways to quilt your own small projects or even larger projects, and I'm going to walk you through how I use this technique. I actually have this wall hanging that I've already quilted using crosshatch quilting, and then I'm going to walk you through using some fabric and just show you exactly how to use this technique and get the lines just really looking great on your home machine. Let's get started. Okay, so this is my finished, uh, it's called Flowers in a Row, and it's just a mini quilt or wall hanging that I used crosshatch quilting on. I did about five eighths of an inch on this in between uh, um, for the distance between my lines going both directions and generally a rule of thumb I believe is that the smaller your project the smaller you can make your squares so I feel like half an inch to five eighths of an inch is great for a project this size if you're doing something bigger you might want your squares to be about one inch or even larger for a bigger project. So just kind of keep that in mind that it, you can go smaller the smaller your project is. Okay, so to get started, you're going to need just a few simple things. This is a Clover Choco liner, and what it is is there's a, a chalk inside of here, and so I'll just kind of see if I can draw. So it, put, it puts a line of chalk on your fabric when you draw with it. And you can kind of just brush it away. It's really my favorite way to mark and you can get other colors as well. I generally will try to put the lines on the back of the project if the backing is darker or you can also use a friction pen those, though, the lines, there is a possibility of it coming back. I, I don't like to use them. They disappear when you iron it, but if, you, if it gets really cold, those lines do reappear. So I try to use the chalk whenever possible or a disappearing pen for my line. Okay, so that's your first step, is to find something that you will use to do some simple marking. Now, I only mark a couple of lines, and the rest of the time I use this bar that fits into the back of the presser foot on my sewing machine. And this can be adjusted. And so once I sew my first line, and I'll show you more about this when we get over to the machine, I will then make the adjustments with this bar, and I won't have to draw lots of lines. If you don't have one of these bars for your machine, you can also use painter's tape is a great thing, or washi tape, and kind of use that tape to put some sample lines down. Um, this is the walking foot for my machine. I generally use it. I feel like it really does help with puckering. You don't have to use it but it does help if you have a walking foot to just keep the layers feeding smoothly. Now I've got three different, I've got you know my, my top, my batting, and my backing. And what I like to do before I start is press them together with the iron. If you're doing something larger, you might want to use a basting spray. I don't like to use it if I don't have to, and for something like this size, I won't need to at all. I also use this technique a lot of times quilting small pieces of soft and stable for small bag projects. And I feel like with soft and stable, you definitely don't need any kind of spray adhesive. If you're concerned about shifting and maybe you're doing something larger, what I suggest is just using simple safety pins to pin them together so that you don't have to worry about any of the glues in the adhesive. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do though is we're gonna make our line for our first stitch. 
and what you're going to do is you're going to need a ruler that has a 45 degree angle line. And so you find the 45 degree angle line on your ruler. Okay, so find the 45 degree angle line on your ruler and you're gonna take that 45 degree angle line and you're going to uh, line it up with the bottom edge of, of your quilt. And you're gonna use your ruler to do a line. And again, I'm gonna use this clover chalk. Um, now, on this one, I'm actually using something that's perfectly square, and so you'll notice my line basically just went from here to here, and you might think, why does she need to use the 45? degree line, why didn't you just do this? But everything that you quilt isn't going to be square. And so sometimes if you're quilting a rectangular piece, it really is much safer to use the 45 degree line. So I wanted to get that out there. Okay, so this is going to be the first line that we're going to sew on on the machine. And we're gonna actually go over to the machine for the next few steps. I just wanna tell you a couple of things. I like to lengthen my stitch for quilting. You'll notice that these stitches are not super, super tight. And I just feel like it looks a lot better if you lengthened your stitch. I usually do about a 3.5 on my machine. Okay, but next we're gonna go over to the machine and I'm going to kind of walk you through sewing the first few lines. Okay, I'm sitting here at my machine and I did put my walking foot on. I was gonna show you though, the bar that I showed you, it just, there's a hole in the back of the shank and it just slides in and it can be adjusted quite a bit. So th if you have this feature on your machine, it's really great for doing this type of quilting or really any type of straight line quilting. And I am gonna lengthen my stitch length to a 3.5. I feel like that looks a little bit more like hand quilting. And I'm just gonna start and sew directly on the line that I drew with the chalk. It's a little bit noisier than normal because of the walking foot. You just wanna get this first line quilted. Okay, so, and I do, I like to trim these threads. You're, otherwise you're gonna end up with a gajillion threads. So I like to trim them as I go along. So it's just a really nice looking stitch. If you wanted it even bigger, you could perhaps do a 4.0, move it up or a 3.7, but this is just a really nice look for me. Okay, so we're going to do, this is where shifting this bar is going to come into place. I think I'm gonna do one inch lines. And so what I do is I take a ruler and I, align it with where my needle's gonna be. Put the needle down on the one inch mark. And then I can take this bar and I can put it right on the edge of that ruler. Lift the needle up, move the ruler out. Okay, so now I know I've got this bar so that it is one inch away from where the needle is. So this will help me to do crosshatch or quilting lines that are one inch apart. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up the bar with the line I've already sewn on one side. And it, it honestly doesn't matter which side you do, you're gonna come back and do the other side after. And we're going to sew. And so all I have to do is make sure that that bar stays on that line that I've already sewn.
And then we're just going to keep doing the same thing. Put the bar on the previous line of stitching. And we're just going to keep doing the bar on the previous line of stitching until we've completed all of this. So I finished quilting all the lines all the way out to this corner of the piece. And now what I'm going to do, and remember I had it positioned this way while I was doing that. And every time I quilted, I put the bar on the previous line of stitching. So now we're going to flip it and just continue doing the same thing so that we have all of our diagonal lines throughout the piece going this way. So again, just the same thing. We're just on the other side of the diagonal. Line up the bar with that line of stitching. Okay, and now what I'm going to do uh, is I'm just going to continue lining up the bar until this is all quilted and we'll come back and I'll show you what you need to do to start doing your lines in the next in the other direction. So I've finished quilting all of the lines that I need to from this side to the other side. Something I didn't mention before, this was a really small piece so I knew I wasn't really going to have a trouble with any puckering since I was using the walk, walking foot. But you do maybe want to periodically check the other side, just check for puckers as you're going along. If it's small, I feel it, like, and you're using a walking foot, you're probably not going to have a problem. But for a bigger piece, you might need to stop and you might need to kind of spread it out, maybe sometimes even repin if it's a larger piece. But so far, so good, no puckers here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line with the chalk and the ruler. We're going to draw our center line. And again, you'll notice, you know, for my piece, because it's square, I, I don't really need to worry about the 45 degree line. But let me put this straight so you can see. The 45 degree line that goes right here is lined up with the bottom, I'm moving it over. And I'm just going to draw. OK, so I've got that line drawn. And now I'm just going to start the same process. I'm going to do my first stitch on the chalk line. those threads. And then again, you're just going to pick one of the sides to start on. We're going to use that bar, line it up on the previous stitching line and start sewing. Now again, if you haven't, uh, if you don't have a bar, what you can do is use painter's tape and you can either buy the width of painter's tape that, it, that you want to separate your lines of stitching. For, for example, you could buy exactly one inch wide painter's tape and put the tape down on your first line of stitching and then sew just to the left of it so you're not sewing on the tape. And then after each line of stitching, you just remove the tape and move it over. So that's a really great way if you're 
if you can purchase the painter's tape, exactly the width that you're going to use. If not, you can use your ruler and draw a chalk line for all of your stitching if you don't have the bar. Okay, and now, you know, we've got our first little squares created here, and now I'm just gonna continue stitching, and then I'm going to flip it and stitch on the other side. And I will finish doing that and then go back to the cutting table and give you just a few more tips. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine and my piece is fully quilted with cross hatch quilting. It's just such a great way to do quilting when you have to do it at home on your machine or you want to do it. I love doing quilting like this for bags. It, this method works great when you're using soft and stable in between your layers instead of batting. It is just a great technique to be able to use. Just a couple things. I I'm, did this one inch square so you could kind of see the difference between the little, these are as I said before, just about five eighths of an inch, but it really gives it a different look by going super small or doing the larger quilting. Uh, probably for most things, this one inch is the size I would use. It takes a lot less time than doing this size. And again, just check and see if you have a bar like this with your machine. They often are just found with the little accessories that come with your machine or see if you can get one for your machine if you don't have one. Um, I'll link this chalk that I like to use and I will also link uh, the friction pens that I mentioned. I, I don't use those as much, but they are an option. And I hope this has been super helpful for you today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on crosshatch quilting. It really is a great technique and one that you can do at home and on smaller projects to so that you can finish that project from start to finish. If you enjoyed today's video, I hope that you'll share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the like button. Thanks so much for stopping by.